I think we're recording, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the second part of, of, of class one, where we we'll talk a little bit more about features and structures and the concepts of nodes and chords. And, um, um, so um, we already mentioned the idea of uh, sheet music representation. There's a little bit more elaborate aspect of, of these, um, you know, the opening of this uh, musical piece. It's written for piano, you have multiple notes playing together, you have the different durations, you have the rest. Um, you have some way of counting this, you have the tempo here, okay? So, uh, yeah, a lot of this is in Italian. Uh, so, fast with courage, right? And like open video. Uh, and uh, you have dynamics here, okay? There's some other aspects here, like pressing a pedal so it will resonate. I mean, of course, there is much more in this information than, um, you know, just the notes, because you want also to give some idea for the musician, how you would like to interpret this. And the recording captures this all. Now, if you actually look, this is the same piece, but this is an orchestral piece. Uh, hopefully we can hear an excerpt here. Uh, Maybe I need to share audio. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm still in the same sharing, hopefully. Uh, all right. So here we go. I realize now I checked the time. Uh, I'm going to kind of just go a little bit through that introduction because unfortunately I have another class at 11, so I won't be able to go beyond our designated time 10.50, so I have 10 minutes. Uh, so definitely we won't finish this uh, section today. Uh, but you know, now we want to, you know, we can see how different this sounds versus, you know, if we wanted to go and have a, uh, this played on the piano. And you have these multiple instruments. This is the way you write an orchestral score. You can see the orchestra here. Uh, and um, uh, you have here the, you know, all the different string sections with violins, violin one, two, violas, uh, cello, and, and, and double bass here. Um, you know, we didn't see here, uh, they're, they're not playing, but this is the brass section. We, we, trumpets and, and the French horn and tim this is this is percussion here timpani and then you have the woodwind section which here would be the clarinets and then there is a uh, fagot how do you call it in English uh, bassoons okay bassoons also play here we uh, uh, I think we, we have seen them in, in the video right now but you know if you look at this video further you'll see the whole orchestra so each one of them adds a different color and this is way more complicated representation. And MIDI actually can have multiple channels. MIDI can have the same uh, thing that was played before just on one instrument uh, assigned to uh, different notes to different channels and each channel would be assigned a different uh, sound synthesis algorithm or a sample. And you will try to recreate this thing. Sure. So, um, Sorry, there was a question? Okay. Uh, sorry, let me stop this. Um, okay, and I mean, another type of representation that um, is, is very powerful in the sense of, you know, abstracting and, and capturing a lot of structure and giving freedom is common in jazz. This is a lead sheet representation where you actually have maybe just the melody and then you, you the rest all the notes that usually appear under this melody and we didn't exactly explain what melody is yet but um, um, uh, you have only one musical line specified and everything else just tells you what chords or what other selections of notes should be played so that they sound nice with these uh, melodic, uh, well, basically the music that's generated just by one instrument. 
So in JS, many times you have these chord progressions uh, and they're notated also as letters, but it's a uh, slightly different meaning. I mean, these letters are not notes. They're actually aggregates of notes. So we'll talk about chords when we talk about chroma uh, and melody. So you can have this mixed representation. Of course, if this is being sung by a person, you have also the text of the lyrics. Uh, so if somebody's singing here, we uh, uh, you have the Wikipedia. I'm sorry about my singing quality. Um, so you have to combine here a lot. I mean, you have the voice of the of the person who's singing, what he's saying, the notes, the pitches, the durations, and also you will have maybe some piano or some other jazz, jazz ensemble actually playing other music that confirms to these chords. So just remember that there is this notion of a chord that we will um, uh, touch uh, later. Now, uh, as if time permits, yeah, let me, five minutes. Uh, this is not like part of, of, of the class, right? You're, you're, not, you're not going to learn this software, but uh, it actually helps a lot to see these things in action. And uh, I think this was the part that I was kind of trying to a little bit demonstrate uh, for this section. Uh, so maybe we can do this in five minutes. So what is LMMS, for instance, is, uh, is a musical instrument. It's a free, um, if you want to call it digital audio workstations, workstation, it's kind of a uh, copy or free version of Fruity Loops. Uh, I think I have it open somewhere, right? So uh, what we have here, let me kind of try to start a new project. Uh, in just a sec. Um, no, we don't want to save this, okay. I'm, Sorry. Okay, so uh, this is a music production software, okay? And if we just look at, at one of these options, it has a lot of possibilities. But if I want to create something that looks like a piano, okay, uh, what I have here, I will have the notes. I have my notes here that I actually can go and uh, Okay, I'm just putting them randomly, okay? I can play them back and... Uh, yeah, I mean, no, nothing meaningful in terms of music, but basically what we had, we had uh, something, some instrument here that interpret this. I mean, I can switch the instruments, right? I can put something else and I can change uh, this uh, thing that will be something. Like the, the screen the is still right now. Yeah. Oh, you're not sharing the screen. Thank so, Sorry, so, okay, thank you for alerting me. Um, where is my Zoom session then? Okay, you sure didn't realize that. Um, desktop LMS. Can you can you see that? Oh, no, that's the that's the website the LMMS. Yes, and let me, yeah, and that's the software thing, right? No, that's okay. Uh, can you see the software? Yep, we can see it now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just um, you know put some notes here and uh, I can erase them and I put new ones in a second again. Oops. But you can think about this thing as being something that um, So we have here an instrument playing these things. And what we had before was that I, I just used some, some other instrument that was uh, before. Some of them are synthesizers. This is actually something that you see emulates like a piano. But if I change the instrument, of course, I'll have something else. This is a bunch of sinusoids and oscillators. And 
So this is our representation. This is basically um, how uh, you would relate the piano roll to a sound synthesizer. These are the keys. And just mentioning structures and chords. Uh, you know, oh, sorry, can I want to erase that? Chords are actually uh, multiple notes together. So this specific software actually has this uh, funny tool that allows us to put chords. You have a lot of different chords that people use, but maybe uh, you have already, first of all, an octave. Octave means something that happens uh, 12 notes apart. So if I put it here, okay, did I, did I choose an octave? Okay, I'm surprised it doesn't, it doesn't put the octave in. But let me try to put it. Okay, so for some reason, octave didn't work. Apologies. But uh, but if I want to choose now, if I choose a major chord, okay, that's the first time we're seeing what a chord is. So I chose a major chord. So if I put a note down somewhere, like the C. Okay, the major chord will actually have three, three notes in it. Okay, I can, let me move it before. Okay, so if I play it, this is, this is the piano chord. Let me go back and switch this to uh, the piano instead of the synthesizers we used. So that was the, um, where was my, yeah, MIDI player here. So that's the piano. So we have three notes being played, okay? If I wanna change this to a different chord, like major or whatever we, um, uh, yeah, so we flat five here, okay? So that's the first one, that's a different chord. If I wanna change this to a minor chord, and I'll put it on different notes, your musical piece going with three different chords and you can explore more and more chords here some become pretty sophisticated or pretty elaborate but um, you know seven and thirteens will be I think that pretty much kind of exhaust our time. This is the notion of chords, aggregates of notes with very specific spacing between these notes. Uh, we will not talk what they are, but we will uh, mention how we can actually detect them because a lot of music is actually multiple notes together. And if we are able to capture the structure, the relation between notes, we would, we would uh, call them chords. So uh, quickly going back, can you see my, uh, my screen, the PowerPoint? Uh, not yet. Not yet, okay, I have to share it again, sorry. So if I go back to the PowerPoint, uh, okay. Maybe I should show that. Yeah, I can see it now, right? Uh, a quick yes, I can see, okay. So this was the LMMS, you know, it's, uh, if anybody has uh, aspirations or, or wants just to play uh, and, and try to compose something, I mean, this, this software uh, kind of, it, it also runs on Linux and Windows and everything, uh, gives a good idea of what music is. And, you know, if you download a MIDI file and you want to play it, it's usually hard to do this without having some kind of a nice software that can treat this. A uh, couple more software I'll point to, and then we'll uh, we'll have to continue next time. Audacity uh, is a software that it's a free audio editor. So um, uh, again, we're not going to use this in class as such, but these are kind of your basic tools. It's like you know, uh, if, if you if you're doing uh, some some text analysis and you know you don't have a text editor, so here if you do audio, it's much easier to edit this in Audacity. So it's also free software. Uh, uh, hopefully you see that. If you didn't see the screen, then just follow the link. And MuseCore, the last one, is uh, is a music annotation software. So this is your uh, Word, um, Microsoft Word or, or whatever text uh, editor, if you want actually to see this in a traditional music notation. 
so um, yeah, so we'll uh, finish here. This kind of completes a little bit, you know, I, I wanted to use a little bit more of the software demos to reinforce the concept we have seen. So maybe we'll start next time also just looking a little bit more into that. And then we'll finish uh, next, um, you know, next meeting we'll, we'll talk actually about audio features and um, a Python package that uh, we'll be using that actually does extract a lot of these features. Um, okay, let me see if there are any comments. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, it was hard for me to follow the Zoom chat when, when I was uh, switching screens, so that's why yeah, I appreciate you kind of like calling this out. Um, all right, let me kind of quickly stop the recording and um, go back.